It's been a huge offseason and a huge week for the New York Rangers. Monday, they signed Artemi Panarin, and after the signing, Rangers president John Davidson was asked if Panarin might play with Mika Zibanejad. That's going to be up to the coaching staff with Quinny and the gang to figure out combinations. But I will say that when we did meet with Artem at Madison Square Garden a few days ago, um, he knew the lineup. He knew the team. And he also knew that we're going to be young. And, and uh, I, I think with the way he works and the play, he plays the game, that when you, when you have the Busnevich and, uh, and, uh, and Kratzov and others, um, they're going to be able to learn from this fella. Learn the way he plays. Uh, he looks at the game through uh, through his eyes, and that that'll be creative for these young players to uh, to be able to learn from. And uh, it, those things are all pluses. But as far as the actual lineup goes, that's that's the coach. <laughs> do what you need to do and try to find combinations that work. All right, we will see where Panarin ends up slotting in the Rangers lineup. We now bring in our buddy Anson Carter. He joins us from his home in Atlanta, the ATL on the video call center. Anson, thanks so much for joining us. What do you think about Panarin as a Ranger, and where do you think he fits? I love it. You know, I think it's a it's a great pickup for the Rangers, guys. Uh, you know, Panarin's a player that you heard J.D. talking about other Russian players and the Rangers learning from him. I think any player could learn from him because he plays the game in front of him, and he plays the game behind him, too. And by that, I mean a lot of players see the ice in front. They know there's another forward with them, maybe two forwards with them. But Panarin's a player that has a keen sense of where everyone is, forwards and D. So if you're a late trailing man, say if a Jacob Trouba who likes to jump up in the rush, uh, he should be a threat now going to the offensive zone. And you know, AC, it felt like this Rangers, was Rangers thing was going to be a build, continue with young players. Does this advance the cause at all for you? Like, do you look at this now and say, this could be, this should be a playoff team? It should be, but I look at the rest of the Metro Division and everyone's gotten better too. Look at Philadelphia. Uh, you look at the Islanders, well, they've kind of stayed status quo. they got, you know, goaltending improved. They signed Anders Lee back, got him back. The Devils have definitely improved, that's for sure. But I think the Rangers are going in the right direction. And the way I like about the Rangers so far is players want to be in New York now because the foundation is set. What Gordon has done as he's brought in quality young players to set that foundation that makes a player like Panarin want to come, that makes a Jacob Truba be okay with getting traded with the New York Rangers, makes an executive like J.D. want to leave the Columbus Blue Jackets who just made the playoffs, come back home and come to New York. If those elements weren't in place, and if it was seen as being dysfunctional, there's no way these quality assets want to come play for the New York Rangers. So that's what I love the most about what the Rangers are doing so far at MSG. And to all the young talent, of course, on the Rangers, in your mind, who has to step up the most? You know, I, I think they all do, to be honest with you. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on Kako coming over being his first year, but uh, my thing isn't so much the young players because you want to know, well, is Heedle, what's he going to be? Is he going to be a forward? Is he going to be a, a center, a right winger, is a left winger? Where is he going to play in the three forward positions? Um, Howden, is he going to take that next step? I mean, it's easy to be a first-year player in the National Hockey League. Everything's brand new. MSG's brand new. Being on the road is brand new. Playing 82 games is brand new. And then you might fall into that trap as a second-year player and think, well, hey, I've made it already. Maybe I don't have to work as hard. So there's a lot of pressure on those young players. And I mentioned Trouba before. Well, if he signs a big extension, there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. It's one thing to play in a deal that, you know, no one's really saying you're, you're overpaid, you're making a lot of money. But now you come in and sign a big ticket as the number one big dog in the back end. Can you handle that added pressure? And also, Henrik Lundqvist. He's getting longer in the tooth. He's getting a little bit older. He had a great start to the season. Can he somehow find a way to maintain that? And can the coaching staff get another goaltender in there, be it Georgiev or somebody else, to help Henrik be fresh for 82 games as opposed to you know, getting burnt out the first couple months of the season? You know, the Rangers and also the Devils had a huge offseason, starting with the draft, of course. Devils made some major changes, certainly as well. Adding Subban, that's a, a huge pickup for them, of course. Do you look at both of these teams, not playoff teams last year, but do you look at this as the rivalry be renewed? And if so, right now, who has the edge? Yeah, there's certainly knock on the door, that's for sure. And you think about Hall coming back, too. Taylor Hall was out for a lot of the season last year. He's the MVP the season before, so getting him back is going to be huge. You have a couple players with a chip on their shoulders now. You've got Jack Hughes trying to prove he's number one pick. He's worthy of being the number one pick and not number two. You've got Wayne Simmons only signing a one-year deal, trying to prove to players that or teams that he's the Wayne Simmons of old. His play is not declining. 
You've got P.K. Subban that got booted out of Nashville trying to prove that he's still an elite defense of the National Hockey League, and it wasn't just a salary dump of the National Predators. So those players have chips in their shoulders. In addition to the Rangers of Panarin coming in, trying to make an impact, building upon the solid season a lot of the young kids had with New York already. And, you know, it's neck and neck. I think for me it comes down to goaltending. I thought Schneider had a very strong world championship, and I thought Hank had a very strong start to last year. I thought Georgiev was strong too. I think whoever gets the best or the better goaltending out of the two will be the team that gets in the playoffs. But without a doubt, both these fan base should be pumped up for this season because it should be very fun, very exciting, and they should be much better than they were last year, both organizations. And you know all about the rivalry, Anson, between the Rangers and the Devils. You, of course, once played for the Rangers. Look at some of this old footage here. I, oh, it's I love be it. Very interesting to see what the next <laughs> chapter is going to be with these two teams fortifying themselves the way they have this offseason. Even better, on the bench. Oh, yeah. line brawl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the game's changed a little bit now. You're not going to see this as much. When you've got – you saw Woods just now in the picture, and you've got Lemieux with the Rangers now. Both those players are very willing combatants. And I remember last year, Brendan Lemieux got the best out of Woods in a scrap. So I'm sure players don't forget. Guys have those long memories, and it'll be heated moments. But what really drives a, 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 a big rivalry, guys, is quality hockey and yeah. good teams. And both these teams will be good. They're very both well coached. John Hines, great coach in New Jersey. Quinny's done a tremendous job so far after one year the New York Rangers. So that's what drives rivalries more than anything is quality hockey teams. And both these teams are quality hockey teams. Yeah, it's also when you're actually playing for something. You know, like when there's something on the line, that's certainly what does reignite a rivalry. Can we talk some basketball for a minute here? Because I know yeah, let's do it. when you guys were, when, when you had the, the Rangers draft party and R.J. Barrett, and Brad Zekas showed up. There's two Canadian guys now on the Knicks. Does that bring you now officially in to the Knicks front as a, being a Knicks fan? It kind of is, but one of your new Knicks players, the Michigan Wolverine, and I don't really pump Wolverine's tires that much. So, you know, from that standpoint, I'll give him a slight pass, but the fact he's a Canadian, I'm okay with that. <laughs> RJ, I saw his dad play ball up close. Like, I was a all-Toronto hoopster back in the day, believe it or not. And don't make fun of me, Bill, because I'll dunk on you when I come and see you this fall. But <laughs> you guys know dad, how. We all know you can't jump. <laughs> oh, man, you should, you should see me. I dunking on guys in the regular. I was always serving guys. They call me the bone collector back in the day. Yeah, I, I was bet. breaking ankles. I but bet. My cross I the, bone the bone collector. collector. The, bone collector. Yeah. the next dad, time we have AC on, he's going to have his all-city trophy in the back behind him, right? <laughs> I'm probably, next I'm going to have it up in the background. But his dad was the best basketball I've ever seen play out of Toronto. So the fact that RJ is a hell of a basketball player, I'm not really that surprised because his dad, Rowan, was unreal. But that was before Canadian basketball players got any respect in the courts. If they did, we'd be talking about me being a former New York Knicks, not a former New York Ranger. And Anson's <laughs> the one former Canadian or Canadian that doesn't care about the Raptors. I mean, how can that possibly be? <laughs> Good on you. Uh, you, know, you know why? Because... It's because I'm a dual citizenship, Bill. Okay. So the fact I'm a dual citizen, I've lived here in the U.S. long as I lived in Canada. So, I mean, I like the Raptors. It's a cool story, but I'd be more hyped up if the Knicks won, say, as opposed to the Toronto Raptors. There you go. Or the this Atlanta Hawks. All right. This is why we love them. Anson, as always, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. All right, pal? Anytime, guys. For more great videos from the MSG 150, check out her right there. And remember, our show is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10.30 p.m. on MSG Network and MSG Go.